The views and opinions of the host do not necessarily represent the views and opinions of the BAIO, the Black African Infrastructure Organization. Do you believe in the concept of an independent diaspora nation state for the descendants of the transatlantic slave trade, the biggest crime in the history of humanity? Are you tired of black African people being scattered across a diaspora, living as second and third class citizens in foreign lands? Should black African people have their own Israel? If you believe and support any of these positions, check out the BAIO social network on Ming. People with various thoughts and opinions on reality coming together with like mind toward a singular goal and common denominator, land, infrastructure, and nationhood. Visit BAIOAfricStand5.ning.com. That's BAIOAfricStand5.ning.com. Black African power and a BB Fahodie. Total African liberation. Peace. Welcome to the desert of the real. Michael Render. So you guys, please, if you tweet about it, please include my actual name. R-E-N-D-R. Is they two in here? I love you, brother. Good to see you. I want to say this, because I'm not a preacher, I'm not a politician, so I can talk how I want to, I can say what I want to, because I ain't got to worry about black folk getting scared, because most of my audience is white people. <laughs> I'm going to be as honest with you as I am, young white progressives. If you're not banking black, me and you can't have a conversation. Because you can't tell me to care about black on black violence. You can't tell me to care about police on black violence. You can't tell me you care about the conditions of your community. If you're a preacher, you can't tell me Jesus love my community. If you are not putting your money where black people are putting their money. I'm not giving you no exceptions. I'm not giving you no outs. The only out I'll give you is if you're a little nervous, you need to keep a big bank account and just start small here, that's fine. But to not have a black bank account post this day, I mean, we ain't cool, my nigga. We're not cool on no level. If you don't have $100 in a black bank account, you can't talk to me about Michael Jordan. You can't talk to me about black history. You can't talk about me who discriminated against you on your job. You can't tell me the Lord really loves me because you are not putting your money where your mouth is. All right? You understand me? So your prerequisite for if you talk to your auntie today, if you talk to your white friend, your Spanish friend, if you talk to your boyfriend or your girlfriend, is what did you do? with your hundred dollars. Now last night, I was smoking marijuana in a strip club with my wife. <laughs> and I don't have no shame in saying that because I don't want you to ever mistake me for a preacher or a politician. Hear what I'm telling you, I don't ever want you to mistake me for somebody who's tired. I'm an artist. I rap words for a living, I dance and jig for white people, and I cuss in front of my children. But they get good grades. <laughs> Before me and my wife left, my wife said, you know, you need to take that last hundred dollars. You know what you need to do to it tomorrow. I said, take it to a strip club in Miami? She said, no, nigga. Because that's how she talks to me when she's serious. 
She said, you need to put it in the bank in front of people tomorrow, because I hadn't started my online account. She said, you need to do it there in person. This is $100. We all have spent $100 over the course of the last week buying fast food. We spent $100 buying a pair of sneakers we like. We spent $100 ordering something off Amazon we like. We spent $100 in the past 7 to 14 days, but did we spend it with one another? I'm not even asking you to spend $100. I'm saying take $100, put it in a bank, and then people call and say, well, what do we do next? Take another $100, put it in the bank. And the following month, take another hundred dollars because you ain't saving the bank. You're teaching yourself to save. You're teaching yourself basic economics. Basic economics is nobody's gonna pay my bills. Nobody's gonna feed me. Nobody's gonna save me. Ain't nobody coming out the sky to break the bank for me. I must save myself. And I will take every one of my dollars and I will put them into my account and I will learn how to save money. I will learn how to tell myself next week for joining. I will learn how to tell myself I'm gonna hold on a little while longer before I pay the cable bill. I'm gonna watch local a few more days. <laughs> this is not about banking black. This is about changing the way you think. I'm not banking black. I'm banking on black people to save themselves. No one is coming to save you. No one loves you. You have no friends. No one's coming down and say, oh man, black people been treated so bad. We got great for them. Ain't no welfare, ain't no health care. The only people who gonna say you look to your left, look to your left, and look to your right. Those are the only allies you have. Those are the only advocates you have. If they don't put their money in this bank, don't talk to them either. We have suffered long enough in this country begging people we say don't like us to like us. We have suffered under systems long enough in this country to say that finally they don't work for us. You know why politicians don't work for you? Because you don't work for politicians. You don't work for politicians because you don't organize your money. You don't organize your money so you don't have no lobby groups. You don't have no lobby groups so you ass out again. And I'm saying to you right now, the first step to organizing your money as a collective is learning how to organize your money on your own. Take your 20, your 30, your 40, your 50, and dedicate to saving some money in a black bank every month and develop your discipline. Then what you do, then you take 300, you get a secured credit card, and you start teaching yourself. Tell them about them punk-ass Jordans. And I'm going to buy them Jordans and I'm going to pay him off in time, and I'm going to build my credit while I support his punk ass. <laughs> and I said it like I meant it, because it shouldn't take you 30 years to give $1 million to the NAACP. It should take you 30 years to apologize for not saying nothing. And I'm not mad at Mike, but I'm mad at us. Because for every pair of Michael Jordans we bought, we could have started two bank accounts. For every pair of Air Maxes we bought, we could have not bought one pair and opened a bigger bank account. But I'm here to tell you, nobody loves you. Nobody's coming to save you. Ain't nothing coming out of the sky. I don't care who you pray to. I don't care if they look like you or not. Nothing, nothing is going to fix your problem like dealing with yourself will fix your problem. Nobody's going to give you a loan if you're not invested in their bank. And if the big banks ain't giving you a loan, move your money into a smaller bank. Bank black. Bank small, bank local. Watch your results start to change. Bank black, bank small, bank local. Start demanding that your ministers put the money where you put the money. If I put my money here, you got to put your money here or I'm not paying tithes anymore. Listen to what I say. I said, go to your minister after church Sunday. I didn't say wait a month. Go to him after church Sunday and say, this is what I did. Yesterday, what are you going to do Monday? And if he don't say I'm doing something, take all your past money back. To know who you are, you have to know where you come from. Honor and respect those who help pave the way. Working hard, sacrificing, saving, and building a future for you and your family. We are One United Bank, America's largest black-owned bank, with offices in Boston, Los Angeles, and Miami. We invite you to join our effort in building economic power in America by opening an account at www.oneunited.com. 
Join the movement today and make your money matter for you and generations to come. Peace. What's up? This is your brother, Mr. Holipsism. And um, got a unique episode for you guys today. It's called Mr. Holipsism's We Can Do It Right Here Challenge. I'm issuing a We Can Do It Right Here challenge to all Captain America Negroes, Black Power Americans, and militant integrationists. My challenge is to start a bank account at a black bank. Now, if you do not if you do not do this, then it's official. You are full of shit, just like we always knew you were. So you can prove me wrong and start a black bank account, or you can do what you've been doing, which is flapping your gums and doing absolutely nothing. Now, I played um, a commercial spot from One United Bank, um, and I'll say that that bank is Brother Thomas approved. And if you want to find out more information about starting an account, you can go to um, oneunited.com. Or you can give them a call at 877-663-8648. Now, most people will probably ask, well, man, why are, you, why are you telling people to do it right here? Like you've always said that, you know, we shouldn't do it right here, that we should do it in Africa. And the people who um, say that are usually the same people who don't listen to a damn thing that I say they hear what they want to say you know they hear what they want to hear and they extract from what I say what they want to pay attention to and don't listen to the whole thing I've never said that we can't do it here what I say is that we have to put Africa into the equation we can't take Africa off the table in fact Everything that we want to do here possible if we have or if we establish our base of operations off the shores of America. The key word in everything that I say, or the key phrase I should say, is base of operations. Your base of operation is your power base where you can control the policy where you control the context and where you can basically formulate your stances, your opinions and no one can really do anything about it because it's yours. So if you are anywhere else on the planet, like let's say America and there's a group of people your people in America that you want to help out, you can basically help them out according to um, all international law without anybody doing anything about it. So I've never said you can't do it here. I'm, I'm just questioning how you do it here. And I've always said that. So when I heard Killer Mike challenge and that was him speaking at the um, One United Bank. But he was on a radio show, and he was upset over the um, Philando Castile and the Alton Sterling um, murders. And he issued a challenge. And the challenge was, you know, to take our money out of white institutions and put it into black institutions, mainly a bank. Because of that challenge that he made on a radio show, about 8,000 accounts was opened up at a black bank and about $10 million worth of resources within a month's time, 30 days. Now, that is what you call power. 
that is a powerful thing. And I applaud the brother for issuing that challenge. And I applaud all the people that started their accounts. Because if we are going to be here, it would make sense for us to bank where we live or to bank with our own people. So that's the one do it right here tactic that I have full support of. You know what I'm saying? I have full support of that tactic. And actually, um, I've started an account at One United. I already got my debit card. Um, It's connected to the Money Pass ATMs. Um, I've registered online. The online site is pretty cool. You know what I'm saying? So it's something that I would strongly suggest. And what he said at the very beginning, I kind of agree with. If you don't have your money in a black institution, then why am I even talking to you? Why is what you have to say relevant and important? Because to be honest, what you all what you're really only doing is flapping your gums. You know what I'm saying? To be to be honest and to be real. You're only flapping your gums. You're not really serious. And you know, it kind of ties in. One of the reasons why I'm, I'm, I support the um bank black movement is it one of the things that I've always been talking about is an African-American fund, um, an outlet and a vehicle that African-Americans can contribute to that is transparent and with 100% accountability. This is what I've, I've talked about for the longest. This is what I believe in and this is what I think is the solution or one of the solutions to our problems. If we are going to do anything, then we have to muster our resources and we have to put our money where our mouths are. Cause I hear black people talking about all the stuff that we don't have and all the stuff that we don't do. But then my question is, well, where do you put your money? I mean, Everything that you want, you finance. Even if it's something trivial and stupid, it could be Michael Jordan sneakers. You finance that. So therefore, tame that. You know what I'm saying? So where is your financing for nationhood? Where is your financing for empowerment? Are you putting your money anywhere where black people put their money so that we can pool our resources together to accomplish things and get things done and not have to beg other people to take care of us. Because I noticed that a lot of the we can do it right here, Negroes, are not doing this. And I can respect somebody who puts their money where their mouth is. You know, that's why I respect Killer Mike, brothers who um, heeded the call and did the same thing. One United Bank has a good infrastructure for us to start with. I support them. I think that um, if we pour enough support into this institution, then we can get branches in our particular states. Because the more money that's coming into that institution, the more um, resources they have to expand. You know, I think it says it's in... um, California, Chicago, and someplace else. I'm not quite sure. I have to go and check. But I know that there's not a physical branch in New York. But it doesn't matter. I still started an account. I still got me a debit card. I can still use an ATM without paying, you know, extra charges because, like I said, they're with the money pass, and money pass is all over the place. So that's my challenge. My challenge is start a black bank account. I started one and I put a picture of my introduction envelope that I received from them and I put my debit card. You know, I blocked out the numbers, of course. (laughs) I'm not completely crazy. And I posted it on the um, Facebook so that people can know, yeah, I started that and I intend to expand that account and utilize that account even more um, 
And I want to see how many other people do the same thing. It only took $100 for me to start it. You know, not much. And you can still keep your money in your other institution that is probably white, like if you got Citibank or Chase or Bank of America or whatever. You can keep it in there. But take a small percentage of your money and start that black bank account. And you can slowly start transitioning your money over to the bank, you know, the black bank, getting more comfortable with doing transactions with it and moving funds around until you um, get really, really comfortable. And then you can put it all in the black bank. You know what I'm saying? So that's my challenge. I'm issuing a challenge for all of you. We can do it right here. Captain American Negroes, Black Power Americans, and militant integrationists. And not only those people, the Black nationalists too, the African Senate progressives too. I'm issuing a challenge to you as well. Don't talk about Black people and don't talk about Black issues and don't talk about we can do it here and, and, and don't talk about nationhood if you ain't willing to put your money where your mouth is. And like I said, if you ain't started one, you can say that you're going to start one. You know, I just recently started um, the account with um, One United. I was going to start it with Carver, but then I realized that Carver kind of lost their leverage when they, um, during the bank bailout. I think Carver is under the control of um, Goldman Sachs, I believe. So I didn't feel comfortable putting my money there. So I did a little bit more research. I talked to Brother Thomas, and this was the bank that he picked out. Um, I did my own research on it and checked it out. It's pretty thorough. They're really, the service is really good. It did not take me long to get all of my information and to get all that I needed to start the account. My debit card came right away. Um, my separate PIN number came. Um, starting the account up online was pretty easy and, re- and really simple. So, yeah, that's what um, my challenge is. So I see there's a bunch of people in the queue. Um, hit number one. Throw your hands up because that's basically all I want to say. You know, like my challenge is to start the black bank account. Now I just want to talk to you guys and see what you feel about it. All right. So I got one brave soul that's raised their hand. I think I know who this is. Last four digits, 0418. What's your name? Where you calling from? Mark A. Cunningham, a.k.a. Matt 611, host of In the Paint, Village Show and Sport. What's up, bro? That's right. What's up, brother? I'm sorry I missed you all the other night. I was out of it. So I heard it. You, it you support enough. Yeah, I heard it. It was a good show. Minister was on there. And then uh, Darnell Suggs was dropping bombs. Check out yeah. my brother Darnell Suggs um, at Darnell at at Suggs Writer dot um, at Suggs Writer Twitter dot com. Um, he's a writer, real dude, and and check him out. Yeah, and check out In the Paint, Blog Talk Radio. Just do a do a search in the paint. You'll see it. So what's up, bro? What's up? Um, which bank did you did you go to? I plan on doing it the same. It's just that um you know, I'm stuck right now because I just switched jobs and um you know, I got go from a not let go from a job but um my my job ended and I have a new job so I'm I'm kinda up right now in terms of making a move, but um, I plan on um, doing the same thing, and I plan on doing it. You know, it's just um, time. Yeah, once you get your, because usually, um, if I'm not mistaken, most of these jobs have um, do direct deposit now. Yeah. So. Um, That'll make it easier for you once you get it. But it's it's one United Bank. Okay. 
Um, their website is oneunited.com, and their telephone number is 877-663-8648. Yeah. Remember, um, I had told you that Carver, I knew Carver wasn't, uh, they weren't, they weren't, they were under, um, another bank. Yeah, they were um, bailed out by Goldman Sachs and I think um, HSBC. Every time I hear HSBC attached to anything, I'm like, fuck, fuck that. I ain't, I want nothing to do with any bank that's attached to HSBC. You know, that's another story. But just the short <laughs> thing about HSBC is that this bank was caught money laundering from Mexican drug cartels and Al Qaeda. Right. Yep. And nobody, nobody yep. went to jail. They just paid a fine. Yep. You know. Mm-hmm. So and do your research on that. As usual. Exactly. And they probably got their drug dealers to pay the fine for them. Yeah, so they can keep rolling. But yeah, man, it's um. What, but what do you think about the challenge itself? Listen, you are the buzz killer, and um, it's a lot of a lot of people out here that talk. They talk a lot. They on social media just talking. They, they you know calling people out. So now it's on you, as well as me and yourself, to to do what we need to do. And and um, the talk that we talk and the walk that we walk, we gotta walk that walk now. Yeah. And um, you know, it's it's all about taking out. We we gotta be succinct and 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 um, if we're really serious, we we gotta do it financially, and um. You know, all the rhetoric is, is, is time for that to see. It's time for action. And, and, um, like you, like you had said a couple of shows ago, um, people have now. I, I I don't know what the figures are now, but um, I guess now a lot of people have moved their money into black banks. So, you know, that's 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 gotta raise some eyebrows. Ten million in less than a month. Eight thousand accounts. I mean that's that that makes me really, really respect that brother Killer Mike. Mm-hmm. For real. Oh not just him, it's it's other people besides him that have been saying the same thing along with our brothers and sisters that are in the BAIO, whether they've been doing it on their shows, like yourself, Minister, Holla, um, even my show, even though it's not affiliated with BAIO, y'all still my brothers, I'm, I'm a part of BAIO, and just other people also just spreading knowledge, whether it's through Facebook, Twitter, and other avenues like that. Everybody's been, been Know, spreading that around, so it's it's your energy also. Yes, that's true. I mean, we've been focusing more so on international, but mm-hmm. and, and like I said, a lot of people will be surprised when they hear me with the "We Can Do It Right Here" challenge because you know I always make fun of people saying we can do it right here. But what they don't seem to understand is that those people that I'm making fun of um, usually are anti-Africa. They don't want nothing to do with Africa. And they they have this thing in their mind. And the thing that really kills me, like I had posted some videos up that you had seen. I'm not, that's all I'm going to say. I ain't going to give them no bite. But (laughs) the thing that really just annoys the hell out of me is when they say we are not realistic. Right. Like somehow staying here in America and thinking that you're going to get five thrift states or whatever amount of states and build an infrastructure inside of America is realistic. 
Right. Like that's realistic. They, that us thinking that we can have something outside of America, something that we can control the context, we can control the infrastructure, we can control the socioeconomic and political context, that's unrealistic. But to stay here in a hostile environment with people who hate our guts and thinking that you're going to roll your your black nationhood trucks down Highway 95 mm-hmm. without any beef, no beef from white supremacists, no beef from white people, that's more realistic. You get the hell out of here, man. They they have to realize this is this um, entrenched in Eurocentric culture and Eurocentric values. So for it for it to to cease, that's not going to happen. Yeah, well, you know what they say: a hard head makes a soft behind. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, they don't. They I guess they're going to find out. If they yeah, don't one of the guys. Mhm. Go ahead. I was gonna say one of the guys on one of your videos called me and you cool, and I, you know he called us house niggas because we want to leave. No, <laughs> it's you. <laughs> That's what I find hilarious. You're the person suffering from Stockholm syndrome, yet you're the you're the brave hero, the warrior. And we're the coons? Yeah. And that's he said a person, we're angry. I'm go ahead. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. That's a person I'm sorry. who is suffering from Stockholm Syndrome. So right. I can't really get that mad at them. I, I can't because they, they, they have a condition. They need medical help. Right. And he calls us angry. I'm not. I'm not of course, I'm, I'm angry when... Uh, when one of our people is still for for just being who they are and walking down the street naked, killed by cops, that inflames me. I'm angry about that, but no, I'm I'm ready to leave. So I'm not angry. I'm just we just we just gonna pick up and leave. So I guess you're supposed to be cool, calm, and relaxed while your people is getting killed and murdered in the streets. Yeah, I'm supposed to hold that. Yeah, just be cool. All right, that, that makes a lot of sense. And then you got people um, who yeah. I was gonna say you got people who say we need to have hope and love. Man, man oh. I got people. I got friends of other races who I'm cool with. Who I'm friends with, but we it, it's time for us to, to to be this way. And what would you say if, like, one of your friends who's of another race found out that you started a black bank account, and then they said, "Yo, Mark, you started a black bank account. I don't think I can fuck with you no more." <laughs> well, then they could what never fuck say? with me. I would I would tell them, "Well, you wasn't fucking with me from the beginning because you know." <laughs> You know the shit that that my people go through, and what we have going through, and what we continue to go through. I, I've also had um, friends of other races. They, you know, they might not say it on my page, like it's on Facebook. You know, I'm I'm very vocal about the police and how they treat us, and how they mm-hmm. treat other people. They come to me and say, you know, I I totally understand what you what you're saying, and I, I you know. They respect what I'm doing, so you know. And they said they they might not be able to understand it, but they empathize with it. Oh, that's cool. So they don't come to you and say, "Yo, Mark, I didn't know you was a racist." Nope. <laughs> not those. Not those who are intelligent and understand where I'm coming from. I hear you. Yo, I'm going to bring another caller in. You want to stay on the line with me or you want me to put you on hold? Um, I'm in a I'm in a T spot, so I know there's some some um other noise in the background. However you want to do it, brother. All right, so I'll put you on um on hold and um I'll bring you back in. 
No doubt. All right. Thank you for the call, brother. You're welcome. All right, that was my brother Mac. Um, next caller, last four digits, seven six seven two. What's your name? Where you calling from? Hey, Dominique. What up? What's up, Dom? I'm good. I'm good, man. Calling from Chicago. No doubt. No, so your um, brother. Is it one United yeah. Bank in Chicago? I don't even know, but I know there's a Seaway Bank. I didn't even know this was a, um, a black-owned blank, um, bank because, you know, my grandmother, she had a, a bank account with them. And, uh, you know, I used to go to the bank with her. So, you know, once I heard, you know, Killer Mike and you expressing it on Facebook, whatever, I was just searching for black like owned banks and the Seaway Bank and Trust Company popped up and I'm like, Oh, it's familiar, I know what that's sex. Grandmother used to have a bank account, you know. Mm-hmm. So I just wanna put that out there, you know, if you're in the Chicago area, you know, go to that bank. You know what I'm saying? It's official. You know, I think it's yeah. been around since nineteen sixty five, if I'm not mistaken, or fifty six, one of those years, but yeah, you know, it, that's just one step, you know. It's not that hard. Um, just if you with Bank of America, get the hell out of the fuck them. Right. Um, you know, Chase, you know, all of them banks that fucked over black people during the the mortgage crisis, you know. It's just time to, you know, lead them, man. They set us up, and then once the... The market went down, you know, they started kicking black people out. But, you know, that that's our fault for not educating ourselves, being too thirsty to get a house, just to say I'm a homeowner, knowing that you can't afford the shit, but you got it anyway because you trusted the bank. And, you know, leave those banks alone, man. Yeah. I agree 1,000%. Because, you know, when it comes to money, people is kind of funny. You know how people are with money. But that's why I say, you know, yeah. like, dip your toe in. Dip your toe in. If you got thousands of dollars in Chase and Citibank and Bank of America and HSBC, how's it going to hurt you to take $100 out of that and just put start up a black bank account? Yeah. You know? And do do small transactions with it. You know, use it when you go to the Seven Eleven or whatever. Just get used to doing transactions with that black bank and then slowly start putting, you know, the rest of your money in there until you get more comfortable. Then you can take all your crap from these banks and put it in there. You know, nobody's yeah, asking you know. for you to, to sacrifice that much other than just $100. Yeah. It's so all it takes to open up a bank account, you know? Yeah. And like I said, the One United Bank is Thomas approved. Because <laughs> anytime it comes to anything doing finances, I go to Thomas and get his opinion. So me and him was going through the list of black banks. And this is the one he said that was probably the one for me because of the money pass connection with the ATMs. Right. So that way you don't have to worry about paying those extra fees. Because, you know, the bank, there's, there's not a physical one united bank in new york so i that's what i was looking for i was looking for something where i can get an atm card where i can use it without getting hit with all these fees right right oh so So, you all don't like have like a um you said a physical one like you know you could go in uh no not with one united not with one united there was um harbor Carver Savings that was a black bank mm-hmm. but during that mortgage crisis they got they had some trouble and plus they weren't really supported by the black community that much okay. you know and they got right. they needed help and so they had to get bailed out by um, one of you know like the Goldman Sachs and Bank of America and HSBC those banks 
so those banks have more of a control and interest in it now. So it's not really a black bank. Oh, know. okay. You know, so right. that's Once the one I was see. gonna. Yeah. Yeah. That's the one that yeah, I was I gonna go to. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, we don't have a one United Bank like a physical building in Chicago. Yeah, but I tell you one thing: if enough people support them, then they can put different branches in different states. You know? Yeah, it's needed, you know. And like I said, I mean that's nothing to sneeze at. What that with um, Killer Mike accomplished: ten million dollars in less than a month and eight thousand accounts. I mean. I bet you he never thought that he could do that. Yeah, man. You know, and I, that, I salute that. That's brother. good. Yeah, that's good too. You know, he was he was putting his money where his mouth was at. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. He was talking that talk, and you know, now he's walking. You know. Mhm. It, it's time for a change. You know. You just got to, you know, take these steps one by one because we just, you know, bombarded with a lot of things. And sometimes we got to stop being hard on ourselves and, you know, with each other because it could be frustrating, you know. Exactly. But just like you were saying, like, about the people that want to do it here, it's really no problem. Just um, you know, try to be independent instead of having the um somebody rule over you all the time. You know what I'm saying? Telling you when to move and when not to move. Yeah, but uh, you know, other than that, I mean, we just how can I say? So I, w- I wanted to talk about the. The, the um, situation that happened in Milwaukee too. Okay. And um, you know, whatever the case, whatever dude did, you know, it's kind of irrelevant. But for them to shoot him in his back, you know, it's flat out cold murder, you know, and. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I just, we just need, we need to get our nationality and, and nation in order, man. This is bottom line, you know. We just need to agree on what we want to call ourselves because, you know, the young man made a video and he was, you know, holding up his car, his his brother's license car, you know what I'm saying, to carry him. And he was saying himself, like, yo, you basically killing me because I'm black. And, you know, yeah, I call myself black so everybody can relate. You know what I'm saying? People can listen. But we just got to be honest with ourselves. And we see this. Yo, in their law books, yo, it's it just synonymous with criminal, man. In their law books, it, it means death. They really, you know, that's how they really looking at us when we walk around with that badge. When we filling out applications, we we checking that down and we saying, yeah, I am a criminal. And most of us is not a criminal, but this is what we doing. They playing mind games with us, and we need to learn how to flip it on. I call myself black all day, you know what I'm saying? Which I do. But it has to change on paper. I have to have a nationality, and I need something to stand on just in case they try to railroad me, you know, and and everybody else. And just nationhood is the key, man. Exactly. Because the first part of nationality is nation. Yeah, and we just just need to stop being emotional because I've seen the video... And I don't want to see grown men cry. It's going to be real. Like, do that behind closed doors. I know your brother got killed or whatever. Stop crying on national TV. You look like a woman, man. Stop that. That's one thing. We need to stop getting emotional. 
Let women get emotional because that's what they're supposed to do anyway. Man, we got to stop that, man. We got to stop getting angry over simple things, stop getting emotional and crying. That's why I'm using our minds more, man. Seriously, because I see it on, on social media and outside. We quick to get angry and emotional about certain things, but we don't have to get emotional. Just say and think and then execute that plan. I agree. Because the emotions got to stop. I, I don't know. I don't know if it's because we around a lot of women or whatever the case may be, but all of the crying and the hollering and screaming, that has to stop, man. Seriously. And the I think argument, has, too. I think it has more to do with the situation than anything else. It's like we are in a situation where everybody wants to do something, but nobody knows what to do. You know what I'm saying? Like, we all agree, yeah. oh, something needs to be done. But then when you start offering solutions and stuff, you start getting resistance and stuff from the peanut gallery. And then people just, it's, it's they in the court in the, um, what I call the paralysis of analysis. You know what I'm saying? Like, they know something needs to be done, but they don't know what to do. And they react emotionally. Because it is an emotionally charged situation. You Like, when somebody dies as close to you, that's emotionally charged. But at the yeah. same time, like you said, we we have to show as men that we we are able to address these challenges and think, you know, strategically and not be out there just like because first of all, Emotionalism doesn't appeal to the power, the people that's in power. It doesn't mean anything to. It's like it's like a, a prostitute crying yeah. to her pimp. Mm-hmm. So what what did, what do those tears mean to him? If anything, it's validating his dominance over her. You know, that's all you got for him is tears. But when you start doing this and you start putting your money where your mouth is, that's strategic. I mean, could you imagine if every, like if all the people in Ferguson said, you know what, screw all of these major banks. We put our money into one United Bank or whatever black bank is in their, in their um, city or their state. That's doing yeah. something. Yeah. You know, just can't keep getting on TV crying and talking. You know, yeah. I agree. It's, it's just unacceptable with men. You know, I don't really care if women do it. I understand. That's how you all express yourselves. But men, you no, know, it's unacceptable, man. Especially right now. Yeah. Yep. So, your brother, I'm going to put you on hold and bring in another caller. Okay. Thank you for the call as usual, and thank you for the support. No problem. All righty. All right. That was our brother, Dom. He's a, oh, love that brother. He's always been there supporting our forums and inputting, giving us some good feedback as usual. Um, I believe this is my brother here. Last four digits, 3808. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Peace, peace, peace. It's your little brother from up north. Minnesota. Oh, nice. How you doing, brother? Good, brother. How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. So what do you think about my challenge? My we can do it right here challenge. Man, brother. Um, I'm just, uh, first of all, it's good to be back on what I call Anglicism Wednesdays. Um, yes. It always uh, brings the weekend when we could do that just together on your night. Um, I'm just leaving my daughter and uh, what's called my my middle daughter. And, uh, you know, the conversation I was having with her, I think, is pertinent to what we're talking about now. I went to go get her. We was talking about a whole bunch of different things, and then she dropped this on me. Now, mind you, I've said on many occasions that my daughter wants to be a doctor. Um, my oldest daughter wants to be an electrical engineer. 
And uh, then my second daughter wants to be a doctor, a pediatrician to be specific. And me and Walnut have had conversations about it. So just just today, we sit there and we're talking, and she says to me, she says, Daddy, she says, um, what is a, what is an RN? I said, well, RN is registered nurse, baby. You know, you got to go to school for, I think, two years, and, uh, you know, it's a lucrative field. But she goes, I want to be that. I said, what? She said, yeah. I said, I said, why not a doctor? She goes, well, I look at my grades, and sometimes they're not the greatest, and uh, I think being a doctor is too hard. You know, I think that this is your standard stock, brother or sister, without calling them a Captain America Negro or a militant integrationist, which a lot of them are, but without even using those terminologies, your standard stock brother or sister thinks this way. In their mind, they're saying to build a nation on the continent of our ancestors, a full nation, is like being a doctor because it's going to take 10 years, it's going to take residency, it's going to take 100, you know, 100 grand and stuff like that. Why not just be an RN and do it right here in America? Why not build a little dome in America and play like you got sovereignty, play like you got, you know, control over your infrastructure and things like that. To me, this is this is this is why we're getting a lot of this nation within a nation pushback. And remember, you know, we all said it, I said it, you said it also. The next fight would be nationhood. And I think that the you know, the prophecy has uh, been fulfilled because now you're seeing all of these videos about nationhood. Nation within a nation come out of nowhere. I, I've never seen so many videos about nation within a nation until we started talking about having a nation of our own. And it's weird to me. And what it shows is that a lot of these brothers and sisters don't want to go for the doctorate. They just want to go for the RM. For me, the way I look at it is this, brother, because people say, well, why would you want to go and try to build something in Africa when this is our land? Well, the fact of the matter is, as many have said, all the other countries have gotten rich off of Africa's resources. Your cell phone comes, the, the, the most vital ingredient of your cell phone comes from Africa. The diamonds come from Africa. All these different resources that, that, that are used all over the planet come from Africa. And when you say, well, this is all that we built this, what exactly are you claiming? Do you really know what you're claiming? You're claiming a land that is barely growing healthy crops. And so for me, I just, when I look at the whole thing, I say to myself, I say, wow, would you not like to have, okay, so if, if, if a lot of brothers and sisters in the conscious community, you know, because they like to, to, a lot of brothers and sisters, and I'm going to address this not this week, but next week's show, a lot of brothers and sisters say, well, if you ain't been locked up and if you ain't been in the game in the streets, then you really have no right to the conscious community because you're a phony. Okay, so let's take that premise there. Let's take the premise that most brothers and sisters in the conscious community have been in the game some way, shape, or form. Did you not learn something from the game? Did you not learn that if you have the ultimate plug or supplier that you beat everybody else, all the competition? So if you had a direct trade, the greatest natural resources on it, don't you think you'd be defeating all competition in America? I think that we just we just be bugging out when we – we, we've been in these movements for so many years, eating up the ideologies from some of these movements, that we don't have the ability to critically think about how things have changed and see things in a different perspective. Because if you're going to sit there and you're going to say Africa is not this and Africa is not that, knowing damn well that the Chinese is getting rich off Africa, I just think that you you got a mental disorder in 2016. <laughs> you got to. I mean, am, yeah. am, am, am I bugging out, brother, or what, 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 what is it? No, you, you know what it is, brother? The people who say that are uneducated and ignorant about Africa. That's all. The, right. I mean, that's basically it. They're uneducated and ignorant about Africa. They're uneducated and ignorant about nationhood. Because right. I've always said this, and I've been saying this for the last few um, you know, times when I've been on the air, it's easier to build a nation state outside of America than to build one inside of America. So they got yes. it backwards. Yes. The only reason why they think that it's harder is because they're uneducated. Because right. the reason why we, we, we look at them so incredulous is because we have a group that's called the BAI STEM group where we mm -hmm. put this information and we talk amongst ourselves and we post information. We know, we know 
how it is to build a nation compared just five years ago. Um, what was it? Dubai was built in 10 years, and this was 20 years ago. Mm-hmm. It doesn't take 10 years to do it now. Nope. This okay. they, they have nations, they have smart cities and nations that's popping up this in less than five years. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. And another thing is, they don't know how nations are financed. Right, this is true. They have it's no true. clue. So when they <laughs> speak this, see, my thing, the thing that annoys me, and this is how I feel like, if you notice, if I don't know about something, I don't really speak about it. Right. This is true. Like, if you heard me saying, like, you you see my post. Have you heard me saying anything about Milwaukee? Nope. You know why? Because nope. I don't know enough to right. say anything. And right. people that have strong opinions with little information really annoy me. <laughs> he me too. How, how are you going to take a strong stance on something when you don't know shit? Oh, my God, brother. Let me cut in on this one. It's like... When the car and game situation, may Allah be pleased with her, it went down. Oh, she's a moor. She was? Did she ever say she was a moor? Oh, <laughs> uh, well, she didn't say she was a moor. Well, what the hell are you talking about then? <laughs> what, what you talking about? Like, okay, so once you throw that out and it's not true, then what exactly happens after that? Like, what do you do after that? Do you apologize? Do you take it back? Well, she claimed this and she claimed that. Nah, she didn't. She just basically had some paperwork. Oh, okay. That's your that's your answer to that? I mean, yo, you know what that's like? It's like Giuliani saying that there was never no successful terrorist attack until Barack Obama. <laughs> so, so when you call him on his BS, what's he going to say? Well, I mean, you just take that out of context. What? Fool, you just said something that was a bold-faced lie on national TV for billions of people to see you, and when they take you to task on it, your your response to that is they took you out of context? Are you crazy? Can I can I briefly respond to that? Please do. What made that so sad was that that was a prepared speech. It wasn't off the top of his head. That's right. <laughs> and, and, and before he made that statement, he went into this whole thing about 9-11. Right. So that right. so that makes it that means that he's incredibly stupid. Mhm. Mhm. Him and that whole party. Yeah. They they because thrive like, like Donald Trump said. I love the poorly educated. Huh. Oh, it's unbelievable, man. It is unbelievable. It's like, you know, the the reality of it is is that. For you to say back in the, the 90s, the early, even in the early 90s, there was stuff out there that would have made it easier. But for you to say in the early 90s, nah, nah, you know, it'd be hard for you to build a nation, blah, blah, blah. You know, we could kind of understand. We're living in a day where the, the, the technology in a smart watch is 10 times to 15 times greater than the technology that was on the Challenger that went up in the air and blew up years ago. Right. You understand? In a freaking watch. As a matter of fact, right. from what I understand, the technology in, in your smart calculator is more, in, in like, ten times greater than the technology that was on the Challenger that, that, that they used to send up to the moon. So that shows you. And you get Warlord on here. Warlord has this thing. I cannot recite it the way he says, but he has this, this, this thing where he talks about how fast information doubles in a modern time. And it's amazing if you ever get him to talk about it because he knows about how I really can't follow it because that's when him and Mikhail, they get into their brilliance talk and we just sit around yeah. and say, yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. They get they get into the nuts and bolts. <laughs> mm-hmm. And we just sit around. We be like, yes, sir. Well, yes, sir. And we know damn well, like, we, we can't hang out. It's fascinating to see how quickly information is doubling and tripling in the modern time. So, all you have to do is have the desire. And like you broke it down, I'm not sure what show that was that you broke it down. And Kyla said this, as a matter of fact, in the, um, in the chat room. Kyla Genesis said this. Israel started out as a nation with just tents. And from tents, it grew into a block. From blocks, it grew into a city. From city, it, I mean, you, you, you slowly but surely, you build it up. Yeah. And have you seen with all the technology that we have put into that group, 
I don't think our enclave existence is going to be like Davy Crockett. Uh, something tells me it's not going to be like that. No, not at all. <laughs> we have too all. much technology at our hands, too much modern development, too many ways to build things quickly. You know, with the, te- the technology is not stopping. I mean, just in a, a five-year period, leaps and bounds in technology when it comes to building infrastructure. No Nobody's doubt, out there no banging doubt. no hammers, banging tracks into the ground, you know, with some big hammer like, what's that dude? Um, <laughs> what's that song? That song with, with, the, with the, the black game? dude? Yeah. Come on, man. Nobody's doing that anymore. Nope. But see, they're ignorant, and they're thinking, you know, like, oh, well, it's easier to build it right here. No, it's actually harder to build something yeah as a power base right here. Now you can Mm -hmm. have a really successful satellite community. If you do it in conjunction with your nation state, then yeah, we we can transform these neighborhoods quickly. Mm -hmm. But if you're thinking about building your power base here, your base of operations, you are a fool. Yes. (laughs) And I can't even talk to you anymore. I can't talk to you. Get some, read some books, get some education, and then come back at me. Because if you read some books, you get some education and, and, and familiarize yourself with the existing technology, learn about nationhood, learn about infrastructure design. And if you come back after knowing all of that, you saying the same thing, hey, hmm. I don't know what to say. I have to find a way, brother. Because um, I, I, I'm committed to two shows. I'm committed to... Uh, watch who you follow, watch who you teach, and then I'm committed to nationhood balance, imbalance for the next two Thursdays or whatever. But I have to find a way to craft a message to deal with because what I what I found out talking to a couple of brothers is that have nothing to do with nationhood or the movement itself. I think a lot of people were scarred by some back to Africa hustlers. So mm. in up, no, they say that, brother. Oh, okay, my bad. Because the thing is, is that the minute you mention uh, nationhood on the continent, you will see people squint and like ball up, as if you as if you mention like a skunk or something like that. And <laughs> I, I I stop and I ask them, yeah, what was that all about? And they say, oh man, back to Africa, you know. And I used to get offended, and then after a while, you know, being immense, if you seek first to understand, then to be understood. I said, well, why are they doing that? Because these are good people that's doing it. Some some people I really like was doing that. I said to myself, it's got to be the, the 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 era in which people was talking that, but they really didn't mean it. You know what I'm saying? They were just saying it as as a, as a response to any black move they were dealing with. They were just basically just talking the words, but they they never intended to do it. And I think that we've had that so much over the years, c- combined with black movements preaching against Africa because of one or two bad experiences with somebody from the continent over here. So all of that stuff put in the psyche of generations of black people where the minute you mention building in Africa, to them, their mind goes back to those experiences. And when you talk rationality and say, listen, fool, like build on the continent, like be free of colonialism, be free of the tariffs that you're going to face if you build a nation here, be free of the constant freaking security checks you're going to go through if you, all of that stuff. And they still say to you, no, nah, I don't think that that's, that's viable. Then you got to know, like I said on that one radio show, it's a mental disorder, bro. Yeah. Yes. And I'd say, I'll say another thing. Another talking point that they have is that African Americans have nothing to offer Africa. Are you crazy? <laughs> what? See, this is what I'm. This is what I'm talking about when I say people don't know what the fuck they are talking about. They are mm-hmm. uneducated and they are ignorant. Like there's a bunch of African nations. First of all, they control their own land. Right. That, are, that are thriving and prosperous over there. They're sitting back, going, "Oh well, we just got it made. We we don't have no um, neo-colonialism over here." <laughs> We control our infrastructure. We control all of that. Where's that African nation? Hmm. I mean, you got Nigeria on the come up. You know, you got Zimbabwe, but they're on the come up. They ain't there. Right. Right. And and like I said, in the Negro, the, the, the bootlicking Negro mind, 
what they think is reality is actually the opposite. African mm-hmm. nations are begging for African Americans to be involved. For years. Begging. Mm-hmm. And these assholes, these fools, are sitting here going, well, what do we have to offer Africa? Really? Huh. Man. See, this is why it's like, I, can't, I can't have a conversation with somebody who has a really strong opinion based on no information. Mm-hmm. Yep, Inform sir. yourself, educate yourself, learn something, and then, because if you do that, then we won't even be having this stupid discussion. Right. It's like I right. said with the dude on the, um, the, the conversation with a Captain American Negro or a conversation with a Black Power American, that video. Mm-hmm. It's like, you're asking me things that it's like, I'm saying two plus two is four. And you're going, why? (laughs) And now, so now I have to break down mathematics to explain that. No, I'm not doing that, man. Educate yourself. And then we can have a conversation. One educated person with another educated person have a conversation without all of these buzzwords. Like there's people literally, like what you was talking about, the fear of Africa, Let's not. Uh-huh. I agree with what you were saying there, but let's not eliminate the propaganda against Africa. Let's not eliminate yeah. the fact that there's a lot of our people that literally think that we will be swinging from trees and throwing spears. Oh yeah. <laughs> because that's what that's they have true. in their mind. They they haven't seen <laughs> any images or have can't point to any modern um, development in Africa. As far as they're concerned, it's all um, you know jungles and spears and face paint. Mm-hmm. How how can I have a conversation with somebody when you on a one on you're just on self hatred autopilot? Oh man! <laughs> how can I have a conversation with you? You know what I'm saying? So that's that's the main problem. It's like these people are not educating themselves. And minister dropped off. <laughs> uh yeah. But anyway. Um. I'm going to end the show because I think I've made my point. Um, everybody who's raised their hand has spoken. I thank everybody who called, everybody who input, Mac 611, Dominique, Brother Minister. And um, I'm going to check out. We actually went off the air maybe about eight minutes ago to, you know, for the live stream. But I'm going to end the show way that I normally do if I can find my freaking outro. Okay, here we go. We declare our rank on this earth to be a man, to be a human being, to be respected as a human being, to be given the rights of a human being in this society, on this earth, in this day, which we intend to bring into existence by any means necessary. <laughs>